we will proceed to the excellential session now and for the excellential session we have one of our distinguished professors an erudite scholar someone who has set himself apart and has blazed the trail of his chosen field of career it's no other person than our very own Professor Joel Obona. Put your hands together for Jesus. Professor Joel Obona is a professor of petroleum engineering with the University of Port Harcourt. He is the African regional representative of National Registry of Environmental Professionals. He was the immediate past dean, faculty of engineering, University of Port Harcourt. He is the center leader for the World Bank Africa Center of Excellence for oil field chemicals research. <laughs> University of Port Harcourt. Prior to moving to University of Port Harcourt, he worked with Halliburton Energy Services Nigeria for 18 years, where he held various senior management positions ranging from technology manager to scientific advisor. He has several years of international exposure with Halliburton, Duncan, USA, where he worked with experts in oil field chemicals and developed global best practice in research uh, management and developed several local oil field chemical substitutes for deployment in Nigeria. He's a member of various professional bodies, a registered fellow uh, professional, um, a registered engineer with Koren, fellow of the Institute of Safety Professionals of Nigeria, and fellow of National Society of Chemical Engineers. He has published over 150 papers in international and local journals and given numerous presentations, both local and in his expertise. He's a visiting professor and an external examiner to many universities. He's the managing consultant and founder of Pollution Control and Environmental Management Limited, an indigenous company that specializes in environmental management and pollution control, as well as, as, well as research in oil field chemicals. Um, Prof is a man that has many crowns, many, many um, honors. Please join me, welcome him to the podium, Professor Joel Obunda. this opportunity. I think today I have a new spiritual aroma, having this privilege to be here. I'm so glad to be here this morning to speak with you. We have our biggest dad in the house. Can you say you are welcome, sir? Thank you, daddy. Thank you, sir. Daddy, I want to thank you for this privilege to be here today. In fact, I have another spiritual aroma. I never thought that one day in my life I would be by your side. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you. It's a privilege to be here this morning to talk to the youth on Excellentia Davis Curriculum Vitae. I want to say that the world, even God, is looking for excellent people men with excellent spirit and if you are here today 
you need to pay attention because God wants to touch you. God wants to touch me. And that's why my presentation skill will look at there's vacancy in heaven and earth for excellence. And perhaps you might not know that the new age of knowledge is here. What's the new age? The new age of innovation and transition. And so, enhancing your CV to secure your future in this new knowledge-based economy is critical. Because if you don't have a future, whatever you are doing, you don't have a future, you're wasting time. And we'll look at also discovering the secret to triumph in difficult times. Whether you like it or not, like our father spoke this morning, when you are passing through this life, there are difficulties. As professionals, as students, how do you discover the secret to triumph? And how do you fulfill your destiny, like David? Today, I'm not just going to talk to David. I'm going to talk to you. Do you really have the credential, the CV, to make you secure the future? If you look at the Bible, you discover that there is a vacancy in heaven and earth. What is that vacancy? It is for a person who is ignited, who is set ablaze for excellence, to bring succor to mankind for God's glory. But unfortunately, there's a vacuum. All over the world, there's a call for men, for women, for youths, for professionals to change the world. And when you look at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 30, God said, I sought for a man. I'm looking for a youth. I'm looking for a pastor. I'm looking for a child. Among them, who should build up the wall and stand in the bridge before me for the land? But look at the vacancy. But I should not destroy it, but I found none. And as you look at the problems all over the world, the transition going on, if there is anything that they are looking for, is young men, young women, people with excellent spirit. And anywhere you find a man, a woman, a child, a professional with excellent spirit, that person cannot hide. And so the theme of this youth program is apt, ignited, set ablaze for God to change the world. And this morning, if you are here, God wants to set you ablaze, wants to ignite you. Want to bring you to a point where you will change the world. I just came back from the United States the day before yesterday on Monday. And we went to Harvard to see what they were doing. And the professor there asked a question that was something that was mind-boggling. He said, who do you think are the most important people? Is it the old professors or the young professors? And some of us who are old professors say, the old professors say, no. The people who have the future are the youth. And what we do here is we step aside and give the people who have the future to manage. And when I look at the youths, and I want to tell you that the future is in your hand. And this morning, I want to say that the new age of knowledge and transition is here. And that's why we are here talking to you to find out how you can have a CV, a credential. How do you fit in? How do you become a change agent in this new millennium? And so we are in the age of knowledge and transition. And the knowledge society is here. And according to Winston Churchill, what did he say? He said the empires of the future are the empires of the mind. Young men driven by innovation and excellent spirit. And that's why in those days, you know what you used to qualify a man who is rich. He has lands, he has wives, he has properties. No, the empires of the future 
are the empires of the mind. And the youth have what it takes. So we need to develop our critical thinking skill to be excellent and innovative in all our endeavors. That was what differentiated Daniel. The Bible says he was a young man with an excellent spirit. He was a young man who can interpret dreams, who can dissolve doubts. And that's why as we look at the education we have today, the question is, does he have this element? And that's why I want to challenge you. By God's grace, I've had an opportunity to work in the oil industry, work in academia, and all that, and in business. What are we looking for to succeed? And so, God and the society and man have no place for a static person. Let me warn you. The greatest mistake you can make, like our daddy said this morning, is to come to a point where you say you have arrived. No. God has no place for a static man. That's why he's new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He wants to reveal himself afresh. And that's why a lot of people have been left out. You need to be prepared and dynamic. And when you are not prepared, when opportunities come, they make you ridiculous. And that's why some companies, when they employ you after 15 years, they sack you. Why? They feel you have obsolete knowledge. They feel you are not ready for a change. They feel you have nothing to bring to the table. And so, if you don't prepare and get dynamic, you will have no place in the future. And that's why we are here this morning to ignite you, to say, hey, young ladies, students, there's more to what you are doing now. And what we see, the emotional cycle of change, to change your CV. We have four quadrants of knowledge, as they say. The first quadrant is unconscious incompetence. The second is conscious incompetence. The fourth is conscious competence. And the third is conscious competence. And the fourth is unconscious competence. A lot of people are in this first quadrant. Quadrant of unconscious incompetence. You know you don't know. A change is coming. You deny the change. You are afraid. You resist. You start asking, why are they changing? No. You need to come to this conscious incompetence where you accept. I say, I need to learn. I need to change. I need to renew what I'm doing. You open up. You start testing. You start learning. And what is more, you integrate yourself to this change and become to a quadrant of unconscious incompetence. The quadrant of wisdom and professionalism. Where you start doing things unconsciously right by the reason of changing and adaptation. And this morning, the Lord will propel you. The Lord will ignite you. The Lord will set you ablaze. If you believe this, shout a big amen. This is the age of digital transformation is here. Many activities are now driven by digital transformation. Modern ways of doing things are more of electronic, such as e-commerce, e-banking, e-learning, e-church, e-library, e-medical consulting. And some of us are still resisting. You know, I went out uh, a couple of uh, months ago with somebody, and they had need for money. I said, let's use your card. He said, no, 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 I don't use card. I said, what do you do if you have an emergency or not? He said, I must go to the bank. Is that where you are? The world will leave you. Like I said, we went uh, to Boston the other day. We went to the hotel to check in. We had cash. And we wanted to play. We said, no, we don't accept cash here. We pleaded. So, young men, brothers and sisters, are you adapting to this change? And that's why this morning, if we don't tell you that you need to make a change to fit into the transition, the society will leave you. I love this quote from Darwin. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable for a change. This morning, why am I talking about change, of change? Because things are changing. 
if you see the picture I'm showing, it's a picture of uh, one of the things that happened in this country, they called for employment. That's not a football field. A lot of people. So the days of education for employment is over. You know, in those days, we need to say, oh, thank God, I'm an engineer, I'm a doctor, I am this. The days of education for employment is over. I mean, of employed, every day people are joining the labor market. So what do you need to do as a youth to fit in? You need to establish the ability of your talents to the society. If you are doing anything now and uh, you are not adding value to the society, you are going nowhere. And so, as we look at what we are talking today, we are challenging you to strive to become knowledge and job creators rather than knowledge containers and job seekers. You carry certificates, you carry your word and say, look, I have it, but you are not adding value. And so, what are we saying? You need to prepare for the future of works in the knowledge-based economy. What are the things you are supposed to learn more than your certificate? Like I said, that your certificate is not enough. You need to learn communication skills, time management, organizational skills, leadership skills, team work, presentation and negotiation skills, business development skills and critical thinking skills. Let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters, and my young ones, the professionals. Your academic and professional qualification opens the door. They can apply and say, hey, we are looking for first class. You have excellent results. It opens the door. But what keeps you there at the pinnacle of success is your emotional intelligence. And as I look at this church, I say, God, thank you that some of us we are, had the opportunity to know God more than 30 years ago in this church. You see, what you lay here is so much. By the time you look at what we lay here as even use, you are taught about this communication skill because if you are preaching. Do you know how I learned to communicate? It was when I was given the opportunity to preach. By nature, I was very shy. The day in my village, they called me to preach. After preaching, people start starting. So you can talk. So we give you opportunity to develop a skill. How do you learn time management? Isn't that what we are doing here? As I came here, they told me, hey, look at your time. Be conscious. How do you learn leadership skill? You are a leader, youth leader. You are learning. How do you learn team power? You come, you work as a group. How do you learn presentation and negotiation? By the time you preach to a sinner, you are negotiating, you are presenting. How do you learn critical thinking skill? That's why the unfortunate thing that we don't take advantage of the things we have. If you take advantage of the things you have, you cannot but succeed. Amen. And so this morning, I want to say, discover your gift and purpose. Who are you? Why are you here? Each of us has a gift, a talent, a skill. Discover it. Do you know what makes me happy with God? Everyone is given an opportunity to excel, to succeed. And what is the pathway to your success? It lies within that gift. And that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18, 16, it is the gift of a man that make it room for him. As you are seated here, you know, most of the time, I ask students, why did you choose this course? Some of them say, the father, my friends are doing it. Have you discovered why you are here on earth? Because if you have not done that, you'll be wasting time. The Lord will use your gift, your talent to open the door. And thank God we are talented, we are gifted. What is it that consumes you? What is it that keeps you awake? My young ones, if you must succeed in life, you must come to a point in your life that somebody, something keeps you awake. The problem we have today with youth, they are not motivated to study. They are not awake to pursue a passion. If you come to a point where something keeps you awake, nothing stops you. And this morning, that's why we want to ignite you. 
We want to set you ablaze for God's glory so that you wake up and say, hey, I am not here on planet Earth just to waste my time. I am here for a purpose. I'm here to make a change. I'm here to change the world. Because they are looking for people to change the world. Look at what happened during the COVID. Every country was asking for solution. And so, take advantage of privileges at your disposal. The church. You know, by the time you take advantage of everything around you, you can never succeed. I had an experience. I wanted to work in one company. I was desperate. I attended the interview several times, but I failed for three times. So the last time I failed, thank God the coordinator here was the person who was instrumental. He came to the house to visit me. And uh, he said, bro, you are not looking happy. Yes, I said, I came back from an interview. A job I needed with all my life. He said, well, maybe God has something else. So as he was talking, and I told him, look at, I brought my seals. They are satisfied as a professional for this. And Nigerian says, you are chemical engineers, Nigerian this, National Register of Environmental Professional USA. The brother said, my brother, you mean you have all these things in the house? You can represent the U.S. And today, it was that prompting that today you see my CV, representative, National Register of Environmental uh, uh, USA. If I didn't take advantage of this counsel, and that's the problem we have. You come here, we charge you. We give you counsel. We tell you to move. You go, you are crying. But this morning, as the Lord will propel you, you'll be out to do and become who God wants you to be in Jesus' name. Let me say this. Success is not cheap. And that's the problem we have. Some of us think overnight. You can be rich. No. Success is systematic. Success takes hard work. Success takes determination. Success takes diligence. And what do you do? When you are a Christian, the Lord taught me this early in life. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it what? To the glory of God. When you take up a profession, a friend told me something. He was doing very good in exams. One day I confronted him, said, why? He said, every exam he writes, he thinks that Jesus is setting the question. And Jesus will mark the paper. And realizing that Jesus cannot make mistake, is thorough. He will not overlook. He takes time to read. When you come to a point in your life that whatever you do, whether in the business, whether in the office, whether in the market, you are doing it as unto God. You discover success will come. And this morning, those of us who are students, how do you study to go for exam? Do you know you are writing that exam for God? Why is it for God? When you are doing well, People will glorify God. If you succeed in your ministry, in your career, in your profession, it brings glory to God. And so, you have to discover the secret this morning about difficult times. Some of us do not know that when God wants to bless his children, he allows difficult situations and challenges to occur. And I now know that the problem that is in the world God wants to use it to bless Christians. I, I was shocked one day, one young man came to a workshop and said, Nigeria is blessed with problems. I said, wait a minute. How can you say somebody is blessed with problems? How do you get a miracle? How do you get a solution? Is it not solving problems? Look at the man, Eric Yuan, that discovered Zoom. Look at today where he is. The problem is that we do not focus on what God can do in times of difficulties. This morning, I want to challenge you that the recipe for miracle is problem. Now, if there is any problem in Nigeria, look at COVID. People who discover the, the drug, you know where they are today? So, when you look unto God in times of problem, 
He allows, he reveals secrets to them that will lift them up. Look at Daniel. He gave a dream to Nebuchadnezzar. Now no one can interpret. And that was what brought him to the pinnacle of throne. Look at Joseph. Look at David. And so brothers and sisters and my young one this morning, when you interpret dreams, the world will be looking for you. Can you say amen? Do, do you know what makes me happy these days? There's opportunity for everyone. In fact, women are getting more opportunities than men now. Even the people who are, they don't know I call them disabled. I was surprised. The journey I just came back. The person who was coordinating that person couldn't walk with two legs. They call them physically challenged. So there is no situation that would make you to say, I am disabled. I cannot. It's difficult. If you can believe God and say, Lord, even in these challenges, in these difficult times, open my eyes, show me the secret. The Lord will visit you. If the Lord will visit you, can you shout a big amen? amen? And so, there are wonderful opportunities everywhere. It doesn't matter the country you are. The bigger the problem in your country, the bigger the opportunity. Opportunities are boundless for innovators. Those who are set up blessed, ignited. Those who know the secret of God. In every sector of the economy, there are needs to be met. Gaps to be fulfilled. Services to be improved upon. The question is, what are you looking at? Some of us are into this paralysis of analysis. It's difficult. I cannot. It's never done like that way. No. You have to come to a point. I want to thank God for what our Father in the Lord is doing. I was just shaking the impact he has had. Some of these things we are doing has not been done before. But gave, God gave him this vision. And today, look at the whole world is listening. And so, what are you looking at, my brothers and sisters, the young professionals? The world is looking for you. You hold the future. Are you an optimistic? Seeing brighter future? David, we are looking today, had courage to step up in challenging situations. That's the differentiator. Ability to say, well, with God on my side, I am marching on. I will confront the giant. You need to think outside the box. You need to break out of the mode now. I want to challenge you wherever you are, whether in America, whether in uh, London, whether in Nigeria, that there are opportunities. It's not about your location, it's your, where you are. You know, I was shocked. I was in Washington few last week. As we were walking there, I saw somebody coming to beg. I said, hey, give me $3. I said, my God, you mean in the city of Washington, that somebody, it was not a black person, white. So it's not about where you find yourself. If Christ is with you, wherever you are, you can do exploit. It's not your location. It's your position. And we are lifted on far above principalities and powers. And the Bible says God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we think, according to the power that worketh in you. This morning, I want to challenge you to wake up and arise and shine. I just showed this picture of uh, Dubai. Dubai, before 1960, was a desert. Today, Dubai is a, a tourist center. Look at what uh, the leader said. He said, Dubai, he woke up one day and looked at the desert. And nothing will come out of desert. But he said, no way. He said, Dubai will never settle for anything less than first place. I want Dubai to be number one. Not in the region, but in the world. Number one in everything, higher education, health, housing. I want to give my people the highest way of living. Is there any youth here today who can arise and say, hey, it's enough what is happening on the line in the land. Wherever you come from, I want to make a change. I want to be part of the change agenda. And what do we see? 
I want to encourage you today that irrespective of what you are passing through, irrespective of where you come from, you can fulfill your destiny despite the odds and be ignited and set ablaze for God's glory. It does not matter your situation. Yes, I know you are passing through challenges. It doesn't matter. If you believe God, nothing is impossible to him that what? Nothing is impossible to him that what? It is your relationship with God that matters. Your desire, your faith that sets you apart. When you look at Proverbs 10, 24, look at that man, David. Was he the oldest? What set him apart? David was a man after God's heart. And whenever God finds a youth after his heart, he lavishes his blessings. In fact, God is looking for a man he used to use to lavish that blessing. But where are they? How many of us can make up our minds and say, Lord, I want to be an instrument in your hand. And, and I see you, I can see men and women who can provide solution to the problems of the world. Just to tell you that the turning point in my life, I had a very, what do I call it? I don't know how to describe it. A childhood that there was no hope. Everything was working against me. No hope, but on 21st June 1985, I was still a student. One of my classmates told me, will you give your life to Christ? Because I was sick. I said, what? Because, unfortunately, I thought that when I become a Christian, I will not succeed. And you know, we, when they gave us uh, this uh, calmation, the opium or the opium, Christianity is the last hope for the poor man. You try here, no hope. You try here, no hope. You say, let me hope in God. And to the truth, the people I was seeing around me were depicting a picture that God was not able. I told the young man, somebody preached to me for seven years. I said, I don't want to be poor. But that day when I was dying, he said, will you give my, your life to Christ? I said, well, because every other thing was fading away. You don't need to come to that point. And I gave my life. Thank God for this church. I was nothing. I had nothing. And what I noticed was the first exam I wrote after I gave my life. In fact, when I gave my life to Christ, the whole story went to the, where I came from, the whole, this young man has misrode. They entered the church called Deeper Life. And that people, they, they will use everything to change your brain. My mother called me one day. Very early in the morning, I woke me up and called me and was weeping. I called my name and said, why have you disappointed me? I said, what happened? He said, they say you entered a church that you never succeed in life. That day, I took this Bible. I want to challenge you. God is real. And opened Deuteronomy 28. And I say, ignorant, I stood on the Bible, say, God, look at what they are saying. I know you hold the stars. I know you have the power. I know you can do everything. They said, I will succeed. I wept. What I noticed was, the first exam I wrote in the school, they invited me to the HOD's office. That I should, that is a panel that I is so expo. And do you know, to cut the whole story short, I became the best graduating student in the whole faculty when in engineering. So what I'm saying is, you discover God. What is more? When people were looking for a job, I went for a company. As I reached there, they have finished the interview and told me that there is no job with faith. I used to use, read that this book, that's an ABC of faith. That ABC of faith, sir. Thank you for those books. I told the man, the man said, I work here. The man said, maybe by faith. As I was talking, he said, okay, young man, let me give you a, a test. He gave me a test. I passed very well. And the day they came for the interview, when I went there, a lot of people had masters, I still had first degree, had a bigger, I went to the toilet, said, God, you know I prayed. And I prayed. 
So when I came back, they gave me that job and said my, my performance made it difficult to take another person. We are talking about what God can do. And I worked in that company for 18 years. And they created a position that never existed in Africa. And when I left, they closed the position. What am I talking about? If you discover God and his power, he can do all things. I left and went to the university. Those of us who know what university is, they are rules, senate. I left, they gave me senior lecturer. I looked around and saw that the people who were happy there were professors. I went and said, uh, Prof, uh, what do I do to be a professor? Say, young man, you are just coming. You are in a hurry. I said, I'm on a fast track. Can you say fast track? He said, it will take about 20 years. I said, I want to be a professor. I'm on a fast track. Do you know what happened? I went. They said, I should publish. 25. I went and published over 60 papers in two years. So when the thing came out, they wrote a petition and said, no. Do you know what happened? They promoted me from senior lecturer in three years to a professor. Can you say, man? After they promoted me, the Senate changed the rule that that can never be done. He that works with God works above the law. That's why I want to challenge you. That was why that they can come from uh, the dean to become a prime minister. Joseph can come from prison to be a prime minister. Nothing hurts you. And I want to tell you that God will help you. I didn't hear you say amen. So many uncountable blessings. I will soon stop. Just to tell you that all you need is to be set ablaze, ignited by God. Last, uh, by October 12, 2013, I was in Port Novo, where I chaired a conference for transition, you know, energy transition. On the 15th of the same October, I was uh, in Washington. This picture I'm showing you, I went to the World Bank because one of my centers is trying to develop excellence in education. So they appointed 53 universities, which I am the leader in my university. When I entered the World Bank and snapped a picture with the World Bank president, I said, this is me? Things will change in your life. As I was coming, in, if you see the other one, as we were coming out from Washington World Bank head office, I saw White House. They said, this is White House. And some people were snapping picture. Would you snap? I went there and did what? I snapped. <laughs> that is why I'm showing you. That was what? On 18th. By 19th, they carried us to Harvard and MIT. That is Harvard Medical Center. I'm talking of within two weeks. The bills were paid for. I didn't pay for them. We went to Harvard. We went to MIT. And one of the things that challenged me, when we asked the professor, how do you get people in MIT? He said, the people we get here, we ask them, what do you want to do to change the world? And that's why I'm asking you this morning, my young professionals, what do you want to do to change the world? And that's why I am concluding, you need to secure your future. Be a transformer. Be ignited and set a blaze for God's glory. And if it will be, it is up to you. It's up to you. Now unto him in Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. Abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What determines you, who you become is how you use your time and the chance you have. Ecclesiastes 9.11, time and chance. Every day I see what these young people are enjoying. I wish I was younger. I wish I were younger. You have so many privileges. This, what you are hearing in one meeting slide, it can turn you around. Therefore, therefore, to fly as ego, become a world transformer, ignited and set ablaze for God's glory, you must discover God and your purpose. Develop excellent spirit and see every challenge to, as a stepping stone for greater height. For in these are the keys to secure your future and be on top. You see the picture I showed you? It doesn't matter the course you read. Computer engineering or chemistry, biology. There is a wake-up call 
everywhere in the world. For men, young men of excellence, call to find creative and innovative solutions to become the person you were created to be, ignited and set ablaze for God's glory. We are created for God's glory. And whatever you are doing that does not show God's glory, you are wasting time. You know, the projects I'm running presently, they don't pay you for effort. They pay you for results. They tell you, this is the money we are giving you. Some of us are busy making efforts. The world has passed that stage. You come to work eight hours. What did you do? I have been here eight hours. Where is the result? And one of the challenges I have when I have opportunities like this, and what we hear from our daddy is, with all we are hearing, where is the result? The world is no longer paying for efforts. That's why they tell you, if you can do this work for two hours, go ahead, we'll pay you. But people are going around making efforts and nothing to show. This morning, you have results. If you have results, can you shout a big amen? amen? I am stopping here. I, I don't know if you saw it, have seen this picture of ego. It is time to fly. It's time to be set ablaze. I want to thank our Father in the Lord for this opportunity. I never knew that, sir. In fact, if I can take a picture with you, it will be wonderful. So I can put it on my, just grace it, that once upon my lifetime, a desire, this is one of the, my greatest accomplishments, to see it at the aroma of Pastor W, Dr. Kui. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. So you can fly. You can fly. How many of us are ready to fly this morning? Are you ready? If you are, if you are ready to fly, shout amen. amen. If you are ready to change the world, shout amen. amen. I want you to stand up and convert it to prayer. So God, I will fly. I will change the world. I will be set ablaze. I will be ignited. Yes, the Lord is here to help you. The Lord is able. The Lord can do all things. The Lord can bring you from nowhere and make you somebody. I am telling you today that the transition is real. You will not be left behind. That's why this morning we have this privilege. I want to thank God that we are here. I don't know what you want God to do for you. Forget about the challenges. Something new is going to be happening. You'll be set up, blessed, ignited. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to conclude this prayer if you are ready to fly. Are you ready to fly? Are you ready to fly? Raise up your hand. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this privilege. It is not in vain you have made this possible. Lord, you want to set us ablaze. You want to set the young ones ablaze. You want to ignite us for your glory. Oh Lord, I pray that this side change agents. Wherever they are, in Nigeria, in America, in London, every country, there will be change agents in the name of Jesus. Every power that will be holding them captive. God has set you free. The Bible says the Son of God shall set you free. You'll be free indeed. You are free. You fly. You'll be ignited. Go and shine. Go and change the world. If you change the world, shout a big amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seats, please. This morning, we just finished this session, David's Curriculum Vitae. And we know that a lot of us would have questions from this powerful session. So for those online joining us from different countries, regions, states, in Nigeria, in Africa, outside Africa, please, uh, there is a link 
on your screen right now, visit that link to ask your question. And for those of us at the Alpha location here, you want to uh, step out to ask questions. Uh, for this question session, we have um, two great people who will be joining our guest speaker here uh, to answer questions. The first person that will be joining us virtually is Pastor Daniel Bamigbanyo. Let's jam our hands for Jesus. He is an expert business analyst with a strong tech bias. He's a certified management consultant and a fellow of the Institute of Management Consultant. He is also the national president of the Young Professionals Fellowship, Young Professionals Forum, YPF. Let's jam our hands. He will be joining us from Zoom. We also have... Uh, a pastor, a leader, Pastor Wale Oshineye. Are you not happy? Let's jam our hands. Thank you. He's a seasoned geo-information analyst. He will join us at the front here. Uh, with well over 24 years' experience in the oil and gas uh, industry in Nigeria. He's an avid writer, he's a speaker, he's a team coach. Is a mentor with vast experience uh, with teens and young adults. He is also the state DLSO or teenage or youth pastor at the DLBC River State. Let's jam our hands for Jesus. <laughs> Joining these two great people is Professor Joel that just finished our excellential session. While waiting for those who would come up, uh, I want to tell you that that was a great session. If you missed it, Prof has given us, had given us a lot of um, great words. He had said that the impact of the future is the impact of the mind. And he told us that there are no boundaries to opportunities. Wherever your location, wherever you might be, you shouldn't uh, see your location as uh, a limitation. And he has talked about uh, the circle of uh, the circle of unconscious incompetence, conscious incompetence, unconscious competence, and conscious incompetence. And I'm sure that we know now that nobody will just pay you for your efforts, right? Praise the Lord. Are you with me? I said nobody will just pay you for your efforts. People want to see results, and I'm sure that we have been ignited for results ignited for glory and you have not just been ignited by any kind of fire you have not been ignited by a gunfire you have not been ignited by a white fire you have not been ignited by a campfire but you have been ignited by god's fire for those who have been ignited by god's fire when i say impact academy you will tell me ignited for glory impact academy some people, you know, he said they are not conscious that they are competent. I want to know those who are conscious of their competence this morning. Impact Academy. Thank you. So we have those online and virtually. We are those uh, in the Alpha location. Please should come forward if you have questions from what uh, Prof had said. Someone online had said that someone who just gave his life to Christ and discovered the Waik Ma practice is a sin. Do you have to write your Waik again without malpractice? Um, I would allow Pastor Daniel Bamibayan from Zoom to answer that question. Somebody has said that he has just given his life to Christ and he has discovered that uh, this Waik, uh, he wrote uh, his wife was uh, a malpractice. He said, does he have to write his wife again without having to do malpractice? Uh, he wants an advice. Pastor Daniel Bamibayan, please. 
All right, thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everyone, once again. And uh, I'm very confident that uh, the Lord will do great things in our midst. He has begun already. And our lives will be taken to the next level of glory in the name of Jesus. Uh, to that question concerning what to do when you discover that uh, you have written your exam by malpractice, and uh, the question is, what should you do at this time? Well, this borders on the question of restitution. And um, we have an example of restitution in the story uh, of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. Uh, and the Bible says concerning Zacchaeus in Luke 19 verse 8. Uh, let me read that so that we know that what we are saying is based on the scriptures. Luke 19 in verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. He means that of his possession, the things that he has acquired, is making a commitment to say that of those things, if there is anything that I've you know, received by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. And that's to say that whatever we do, whatever it is that we have acquired through unrighteous means, we need to restore it. If you have stolen something that belongs to someone, you need to take it and give it back to them. In the same vein, when you write an examination and it wasn't written uh, by you or probably you, you used an expo and then you got converted and you found out that that thing was not done according to the will of God in the right way, then you need to write to the authorities and let them know that you, you know, you, you there was an error. There was, a, you know, you actually, um, had a mal were involved in a malpractice while writing that examination. Of course, this kind of um, restitution, you have to carry your leaders along, engage them so that they are involved in your, you know, engagement with the authorities, you know, of why. So, but it's important that you make it clear and you restitute, you correct your ways. You make them understand that you actually erred in the course of acquiring that result. That is what will be pleasing unto God. But make sure you also carry your, leader, your local leaders along in you know, going about that restitution. Thank you. Let's jump around. Thank you, sir, for answering that question. You've heard about the restitution there. So we'll move to the Alpha location right now. Uh, we have a lot of people there. We have the, uh, the first um, sister here at the front with the Udi, yes. Hallelujah. Please, I want to ask this question. As a student, and you're trying to aspire, so I want to ask if there's anything wrong if you're reading and trying to understand things, you're, you're working hard to understand and you're not understanding. Even sometimes fear, even what you know to write, sometimes fear. Well, uh, overpass you, then you can't even write, neither read. So I want to ask if it is normal for a student to be in a particular class and not doing well. Thank you. Uh, Prof, sir. Prof Obuna. Thank you very much. Um, you are not alone in that uh, kind of uh, experience. Now, depending on the course you are reading, some courses are volatile. A course like chemistry. There are courses you need to read over and over before you understand. And what happens is, some courses you just, uh, you don't spend so much time. What will happen is, if such 
you are doing a call that you don't understand. You need to spend more time. Secondly, there are people in the class, your colleagues, that know this course. It is important that you collaborate with them. You make friends with them. And let them help you. If your colleagues cannot help you, most lecturers too will oblige you saying, sir, I didn't understand this course, help me. So first of all, you have to look at the efforts you are putting. You might need to put more effort. When you trust God, you don't need to fear. What brings fear is when you are trusting on yourself. When you have studied, you have done your best. You don't need to be afraid. Let me tell you a testimony I had. I wrote uh, a course when I was in my part three. God assured me he would give me an A. But unfortunately, when I went to the exam, I didn't know I wrote out of points. And so I was worried. I came and asked my father and the Lord, if somebody has prayed and God assured him, can he be negative? He said, I should go back and pray. I went back to pray. I was praying one day. The Spirit of the Lord ministered to me to go and see the lecturer. So when I went to her office, she was marking the papers and it was my paper. And she looked at the paper and said, Joel, you wrote out of point, but I know you know it, but I will give you A. And I had A in that course. And that's the miracle of God. When you have done your best, trust God. He can do the unthinkable. So don't be afraid. Believe God. Put extra effort. All will be well. Amen. Thank you, sir. Let's jam our hands for that. People who are ignited, I say let's jam our hands for that answer. Thank you, Prof. Thank you for that beautiful answer, sir. The brother with a striped black, um, white and black uh, shirt, um, native. Yes. Praise the Lord. Actually, I want to ask a two question. One question I want to ask is, when we are talking about people that like they are educated, my question is going like this. What about those that, although they want to go to school, but there's no money, there's no privilege at all. Looking at the background of where they came from, there's no hope of income like then going to school. And it's just as if they are stuck in the place where without knowledge, no knowledge of school, nothing at all, that there's no hope looking at them, there's no hope for them. So in that kind of people, that, those kind of people, what is their like vision? Like what will become of them? Like when they sit down and begin to think and say, other people are moving forward and they want to soar like ego also like those other people, but Looking at their life, you will see that they look at the left, right. There's no hope of them like having knowledge or doing anything. So I want to ask, how can such a person be able to move from where he is to where he ought to be? Although he have the desire of becoming great, but looking at the environment and where he came from, there's nothing at all. And my second question is that you start about a ski and then Although you did not learn the ski, it was by God's grace, and then you start it up, and then God helping you, you move to like a, 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 a place that at least you can you be able to see some income, little little income that is coming to you. And the Bible made us to understand that one chase one thousand and two ten thousand, and then you have come to a, a, a point that you need a helping hand. And all the people you have like meet as a leader in the church and the rest of them that you have met, 
like encouraging you, empowering you, nobody seems to help. And it's just as if you are stuck in the same place with the knowledge you have. You have the knowledge to move forward and you have a greater vision, but yet what you are to do and what you are supposed to have to have that thing and to accomplish your vision, your, your, your goal. There is just as if nothing is coming out for you at all. So in this kind of situation, how do we move forward from where we are to where we ought to be? Knowing that there's no one that wants to help, there's even you yourself, you are just confused about the life and what you are living. Thank you. So this is my question. Um, Pastor Wale, please. Thank you very much. Uh, that particular question. Number one. I just want to express it to you that there is no one who is hopeless. And especially when you are in the kingdom of God, we have great hope in him. Him, capital H. Great hope in God for all things. Because we know that with him, all things are possible. Telling us that you read or that you try one way or the other, you want to study but there is no one to sponsor your education. You are a citizen of this country. You are a citizen of this state. And I know that even in this state, there is free education at the primary and as well at the secondary. And the government as well made it available for you, I mean, to pay for your final exams with the external bodies, external examination body like WIAC and like JAM. And this goes across the board in the state, you're latching on that particular opportunity as well. Beyond that, oil companies and non-governmental organizations in the states also make such things available for indigent students, community by communities, and some of the international oil companies as well, they have a blanket program. I want to tell you that use this model, read, and you will be read. Then after that, you will be found as well. Uh, there are some people I know in the youth ministry. We only just encourage them. There are opportunities around you, here where you are, and globally as well. It is just for you to be informed about those opportunities, and you will not be stuck where you are. Secondly, you learn about a skill, a talent. You have a talent. You got skill, and then in the environment where you are, look deeply. David had skills. Joseph had skills and talent as well. Daniel had all these things. But do you know one thing with all of them? They were faced with disadvantages at each phase of their lives. But the conclusion of their life, we can read in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, those are the heroes of faith. If you can look beyond the challenges around you, Definitely, you can be among those heroes of faith in our generation. Do you understand, sir? Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause for Pastor Wale for that answer. Thank you, sir. Um, we'll take one more question from the Alpha location, then we'll go online. Uh, the, the short sister there, the sister at the back. <laughs> All right. Good morning, sir. My question is, how do I discover my God-given talent? And how, how can I actualize those gifts and talents given to me by God? How can you actualize God-given talents? How can I talents? discover the gifts okay, discover and, the and actualize. And how can I actualize the gifts? Prof, sir. Prof Ogbona. Thank you very much. Um, my sister, you are not short. You are wonderfully made. <laughs> Created in his glory. Like uh, when I was teaching, I did say that each of us, God has given us a talent, a gift. And that is the part that lies to your success. You see something you like doing. It's natural. You, you are not tired like a small boy playing. 
it consumes you. If you watch, there are things that you love doing. I don't know, it could be a subject, a subject you love. Whether you are feeling sleepy, you want to read it. Most of the time, the Lord puts that interest. Secondly, also, you can pray and ask the Lord to lead you for why you were created. But the challenge is you have to rekindle the gifts of God in you. Most of us, it's just like uh, we are talking of chemistry, mathematics. If you don't make extra effort, that gift can die. So one thing is you discover where your interest is because the tendency is that where your gift is, where your talent is, your interest will be there. You will love doing it. Then you make an effort to rekindle that gift. Then you depend upon God. Eventually, it will come to pass. Praise the Lord. Are you okay? Are God, you satisfied? God right. bless you. Thank you. You are not short. You are big. Praise the Lord. So we go online now. We know some people are online, and um, they are, because this is a global program, so we'll be expecting uh, the answers, uh, the questions from online now to be on our screen. But as we wait, I'll try to pick some of them and um, hope that we can uh, take some of them. So we have here, please, sir, if you have a creative mind to do something to progress the country and you are discouraged in all aspects, like money, parental support, and feelings, that you cannot go beyond your current limits, how can you overcome this? You have something, a creative mind to do something to progress the country and you are discouraged in all aspects, like money, parental support, and feelings that you cannot go beyond your current limits. How can you overcome this? Uh, Pastor Bangbayon. Uh, you have a great idea on how you can transform the nation and maybe the world at large. Um, I'd like to first of all tell you that you should not be discouraged. We have an example in David, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. And um, having that assurance that you have God reminds you and lets you know that no matter the obstacles, you have what it takes to overcome it. That's the starting point. You must first of all declutter your mind from feeling that um, you are restrained because once your mind is limited you will not be able to see the opportunities that will enable you uh to be able to explore you know the options that are available to you so first of all you need to give yourself that reassurance that because you have god one with god is the majority if god be for us who can be against us see the reality is that Life has a way of filtering those who are not determined, all right? And so if there is a goal you will have in front of you, be sure that obstacles will always come to prevent you, to stop you on the way to the accomplishment of your goal. Now, once you have cleared that and uh, you have a good state of mind with assurance and confidence, that with God, you can do all things. Then you need to look in your environment. You may have a very big goal to change the nation, you know, to provide a, a big solution that will solve the problem of the entire nation. But it's important that you look at how you can navigate around to start small. Many times we have big ideas. We have you know, excellent thing that you want to do, but the resources are not there. Do you need to take up a job to get some income, to get some um, revenue that will help you to have a backup that you can use to sponsor your vision, that you can use to sponsor the, you know, development of that project. So don't be so fixated on the fact that, yes, I have a solution, and then this is the only way to do it. 
I must get the money. Somebody must send money for me to be able to do this. It is possible that you take up an employment, take up a job, gather some income, and then once you have some income, you can then face your idea to say, this is where I'm going, right? I'm here. I want to build uh, maybe a solution that will help us to be able to, you know, uh, number all the people in the nation, right? Have a good account of the people in the nation. Can you first start by building a solution that helps your local church to be able to account for people, that helps your school to be able to account for people and get proper bio data? That reference point opens the door for you because you have done something that people can see. You know, the reality is when people want to put money in your business or in whatever they want to do with you, first thing they check for is traction. All right? Have you done anything similar? Do you have something that shows that you have the capability to do this? Okay? So that's very important. Beyond that, they check your competence. You're saying that you don't have people to support you. Do you have competence in that field? Have you demonstrated that you have the competence to be able to execute that thing, that proposal that you have put together? Have you even documented your proposal? Have you shown a proof that this proposal is something that is doable? Have you, you know, what man thinking to build a building, uh, a house does not first count the cost. You must be able to count the cost, right? You must be able to put together what is required to be able to, you know, uh, like a budget, a proposal, something that shows that this is a potential revenue. This is a potential cost and investment that is required to be able to bring this idea to fruition. Many times, even while putting down that proposal, while documenting what you want to achieve, you find out that it helps you to be able to understand better the problem that you're trying to solve. So while you are looking to solve that problem, it is important that you start small and then scale. It's important that you make sure that you are doing something every day that will stand as traction, as your track record, that will encourage other people to join you and put their investment in that um, wonderful idea that you have in mind uh, to implement. So remember, as a summary, it's important that you first of all declutter your mind. Remove that thing that is telling you that you cannot, you cannot do it. That feeling of discouragement. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Because God is on your side, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Once you have picked up yourself in that, make sure you begin to create traction. Make sure you document your idea. Make sure you have everything well documented with respect to the cost that is required, as well as you know, the revenue that is likely to come from that idea. Because if you cannot show the value in that idea to investors, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to partner with you and to support that project. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's jump our hands for that. I'm sure our sister has gotten, uh, brother has gotten the answer online. So uh, another question online says, how do you combine your skills from different fields like photography and GIS and still be gainfully employed in our current environment? How do you combine your skills from different fields like um, photography and GIS? This person wants to know about a uh, combination of skills and still working. Um, Pastor Wale. Praise the Lord. Language globally that is respected among the professionals is just this word, C, collaboration. The next word around it is integration. And the next word around it as well is networking. Now, for somebody with a skill set or multiple skill sets, and you want to integrate these skill sets, or you want to network with other team members or other people, those skill sets, 
you are trying to create a space or you are trying to operate in a space which probably other people or which is unique to you. The question mentions two areas which he is finding difficult to integrate and which naturally many people have integrated, which is GIS, which is Geographic Information System and Photography. Uh, in special science, these two fields had been like twin system. The photography aspect of it could expand or extend into a natural scientific field called remote sensing. Because photography is simply about how to capture image from a distance. And remote sensing deals more on that and then it can expand so much on that. So, Somebody who is a geo-information analyst, a geographic information analyst, can integrate digital photo or expand the scope of digital photography within the space of geographic information system. It can also specialize much more in remote sensing. Now, what is currently going on and which is also increasing the frontier of technology is in the application of drone. Some of us in here, we have been seeing how drone flies, it captures the pic, it gives the data, and it throws it around on the internet and everything. Now, all these are available opportunities. Now, how do you develop yourself more in this? I'll give you some simple areas where you can learn for free online. You can, probably you can write this down. There are MOOC courses, which are free online. Where do you get these MOOC courses? There are webinars online which are free. Where do you get all these ones which can help you? Number one, we have Coursera. Coursera is an online learning platform. And then you can get a lot within that particular space which can increase your learning curve. There is TEDx. And then some Ivy universities in the United States of America as well have their learning platform where you can learn for free, online learning. And then you can go to MIT platforms as well where you can learn for free. So how do you integrate all this? Hit those online learning platforms and your knowledge curve, your learning curve will definitely increase. Thank you very much. Let's, let's appreciate our pastor. Thank you, sir, for that great answer. So we'll just take one more person from the Alpha location and um, wrap up. Uh, so I think we've not taken a lot of sisters. Um, sister in, um, is it pink? Uh, orange color, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Um, I aspire to be great, actually, in my area of profession, I'm a fashion designer. So, in my research on fashion designing, how to, because I had to go online to check people that have really made it in this area. Now, you see, you see um, like Vicky James, she's at, as in 27 years old, she's a billionaire in fashion designing. But when I went through my research, I noticed that you just, you cannot, as, in, as a Christian, you can't portray the fashion they portray that promoted them to that level. Because when you go for fashion shows, you see uh, immoral dresses they portray. So you, as a Christian, how will you step up to that level without you know, joining them you know, in port? Because sometimes they organize fashion shows that uh, like this particular person, that was what promoted her. You know, they, they organized a fashion show which she participated and won and got an award and that promoted her. But I personally cannot go for such program because I won't make dresses that will portray one's nakedness. So how do we break that edge as a Christian to make it to the um, height? To make it to the height, that's my question. Thank you. I think that was clear. Prof? Prof, sir. Thank you very much. Um, again, I want to say that most of us don't take advantage of what we have. 
you recall that uh, Moses and the children of Israel were crying as they were crossing the Red Sea, but the rod was in their hand. When you look at the number of people in the church, one of the greatest challenge uh, sisters have is faithful tailors, faithful fashion designers. When you look at, let's just take for instance, Deeper Life, Portacourt, the number of sisters who want dress to be made according to God's standard will make you a millionaire. So rather than looking outside, take advantage of these people and add value to them. What is important is not the space you are playing in. It is the value you are adding. And I've always uh, told myself that if a sister will take up plating of hair, faithful, get uh, faithful sisters, he will be a millionaire. So what I would tell you is, there are always unrighteous way of making wealth, but there are also righteous way. Take advantage of the people who are Christians. Look at what they want, the kind of fashion. That will make you peculiar. You create a niche. Because you are targeting a clientele that is within your reach. Okay? So go and look at what sisters want and create a niche there. You'll be a millionaire. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's stand up and pray. Let's commit what we have had to God's hands. God has opened our eyes this morning and he has told us that when we are ignited for glory, we'll be on a fast track. I want to tell God that, Lord, give me the knowledge, the competence, the consciousness to be relevant for my generation. When my colleagues have been manifested, when their glory is manifesting, I don't want to be left out. When the world is looking for competent leaders across various industries, in your school, in your institution, in your places of work, you will not be left out. The Lord has a place for you this morning. And as big as daddy come later and he ignites us for glory, you will not miss it. Raise up your voice and tell God. Someone beside you is praying and you are keeping quiet. 